Hey, howdy guys, it's Connor McCaskill, and joining me today is Dave M -M 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 Mays. Dave Mays with Keto Tika. We're out here in Huntington Beach right now. We're kind of doing like a- Some squats. Yeah, some squats. Oh. We're, yeah, we're out here in Huntington Beach. We're shooting with a uh, uh, this TikTok personality named Madison. Yes. Just Madison. I. Just Madison. Madison, name on the screen. Madison. She's great, go yeah. follow her. Yep, go follow her. So we're helping her uh, get a music video shot. Also kind of maybe doing some behind the scenes stuff. But while we're here, yeah. we kind of have free range of this really cool house. And then I think later we're gonna go to the beach as long yeah. as it's not so raining. It is a little rainy out, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a, uh, well, oh, my back. I'm- My back is starting to hurt. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be doing uh, internal tests between the Canon EOS R and the Fuji film. We're gonna just max it out so it's gonna be log and it's gonna be 8-bit on the Canon and 10-bit on the Fuji film. Ooh. Now you may be like, that's not fair. Well, it's what's internal, so it is fair. Uh, it's what they gave us and that's what we're gonna compare. Really yeah. comparing the logs. And then Dave here, he's gonna be doing a comparison as well. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna be comparing the cameras that I have left over. Uh, <laughs> some of my cameras were unfortunately stolen recently. I'll, I'll link that video. <laughs> it's, yeah, actually, seriously, like go watch that video and maybe, uh, you know, report if you hear anything. Yeah. Uh, people so. selling some, some of Dave's gear, let them know. Yeah, he got a bunch <laughs> of stuff stolen recently, yeah. so. But thankfully my friend Matt Gonzalez is letting me borrow his Blackmagic 6K, so I've got that. I've got my Panasonic G9, which shoots 10-bit now. Beautiful. And then the ESR. So I'm going to compare all four of my cameras with their internal codecs. We'll see how they stack up. Cool. So if you want to see that video, definitely go check out Dave's video. But uh, for now, stick around and we'll, we'll compare some, uh, yeah. some Fuji and Canon. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's cook. Let's cook. Oh. So now I'm going to be doing a test outside with the EOS R versus the Fujifilm X-T3. So let's see how this goes. Okay guys, so we're out here, we're getting a couple of good shots. Dave's on the Blackmagic 6K. 6K. Look how tight this is. I need to get a wider lens if I'm in a vlog. <laughs> this is, is super so, wide. This is so ridiculous. Super tight, yeah. yeah. Madison's over there. We've been getting some good stuff from her. He's yeah. actually been mostly helping uh, Justin. Justin. So his video might change actually. So <laughs> slight update. I think now you might be just comparing the Pocket 6K to the Fujifilm Fuji. X-T3, yeah. which is actually pretty cool because I, of course, own a Fuji film. Yeah. I really like it. I know you guys like Fuji film. So if you're interested in seeing that video, now go check out that instead of the other one that we said <laughs> before. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna get back, get more tests. Yes. It's gonna be good. It's gonna Let's be great. Do it. Okay guys, so I'm done comparing the C-Log to the F-Log from the X-T3 and the EOS R, wrapping it up with this really pretty time lapse. And now we're gonna go back to Dave's studio where we can compare the two on a computer to kind of see how these two profiles differ. So let's go. Boom. And we're back in Dave's office, the Kinotika set. Yo, this is it. I know. It's kind of, kind of minimalistic. But check this out. I thought before we go through the footage. Yes. Ah, check this out. Oh yeah. Game Boy Cut, hold on, MKBHD. Flip it on, get that sound. Dude, oh yeah, hold on. Uh, actually, I almost forgot how to turn it off. Oh, so good. It's so satisfying. So it's satisfying. also very, yeah. very subtle. So we got the yellow edition with the Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, that was Game my Freak. dream, my dream setup. When I was, I think I guess, I guess I was like eight years old when this was a thing. And yeah, I remember seeing a commercial for this, and I had the opportunity to get this. My parents were really nice. When I got braces, they said, you can get one thing 
because I know this is really painful for you. Even though they already spent three grand on my braces, I don't understand it. Mm, my parents didn't pay for braces or a Game Boy. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna we're gonna go look at the footage now. <laughs> Okay guys, so we are finally going to sit down and kind of look over the files. I threw just the standard LUT that both companies provide. So cool. They're for Fujifilm, I threw their Fujifilm X-T3 LUT. And then for Canon, it's just a whole bunch of letters and numbers. I'll leave it linked down below mm -hmm. to the one I actually used, but it is provided by Canon. So these are their cool. These are corrections. Not, these are not like creative LUTs in any no. way. These are just. No, I did do some minor tweaks because for Fujifilm, it does, it's really flat. Mm -hmm. And then their LUT doesn't really fix that all the way. It's still pretty flat. Mm -hmm. So I did correct that a little bit. And I did the same for Canon, but I really didn't touch much. Cool. So this is just kind of what we're, what we're going to be looking at. Yeah, fair comparison. So we got here, we got it loaded up in Premiere, and I went ahead and rendered it. So. Right here, we're looking at the Fujifilm file. So okay. I'm just gonna hit play here. A very heavy dynamic range test. It's very heavy, and you can see up here, there's still a lot of blue mm -hmm. in the sky. It's very shaky work. We were just kind of doing it quickly. And then obviously in the shadows too, everything looks clean. It looks good. You see all the detail in the shadows. The color looks really nice, like over here, especially. What ISO were we shooting at here? This was, uh, I shot 800 ISO or 640 ISO on everything. Okay, so we're shooting native ISO on everything. Yeah. For the most part. For and, the most uh, part. Yeah, yeah. So super clean. It definitely has just a beautiful color to it. I mean, I love that Fujifilm look. It definitely has that that look to it that just looks really cinematic. Absolutely. So this is Canon. Right off the bat, I'm going to go I ahead don't like and say it. I don't like it. I don't like the color as much on that Yeah. One. Now, granted, again, this is Canon's provided LUT. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it's good. Maybe there's sure. a better way I could have graded it, but that's not what I was kind of yeah. going for. So this is Canon's LUT, and you look kind of sad almost. Like, especially <laughs> well, am, in the skin tone. Like, it doesn't, I am pretty sad. I yeah. uh, lost my Leica that day. Oh, I, just, I know. I mean, that day as in today. But honestly, over here, like, it doesn't look like this looks good. Yeah, you everything. Know, like, I mean, overall, if uh, to the naked eye, nobody's going to really know the difference. But seeing it back to back with the Fuji, you definitely. The Fuji just has a more cinematic kind of look to it. Which and, is interesting, yeah. But I will say the dynamic range I'm a little impressed by, it doesn't seem to be clipping all that much but if you look at my jacket you can see some of the highlights are clipping right here and then right behind me some of the white is like borderline borderline clipping, clipping. but it did keep the sky but kept the sky blue. so if i go back to fuji which is right here mm -hmm. i would say it's the same though it's similar yeah very much the very same. similar but uh, um, there's there is some sort of aesthetic to the fuji that just has a cinematic thing it's hard to put my finger on it I yeah don't know. It's Fuji's doing some magic for sure. Yeah. Okay, so here's the next clip of Madison. She was doing her music video, and I thought I'd go ahead and do a test while she was while you guys were shooting. So this is Fuji film. Again, looks really good. Look, I really like the greens. Yeah, the greens are really vivid, really nice. They look just very pleasing. And this is I just straight like out them. of the camera. I would probably still mess with the tint a little bit because sometimes you can get some spill with the green that can come but in there. Canon's doing something crazy here. The Well, I mean, here you are. Canon's doing more magenta for sure. It's not as green yeah. looking. But um, like her pants look very different color wise. Yeah, I mean, completely different. Are you using VND on both of these? Yes, both have the same mm -hmm. variable ND, the Peter McKinnon, yeah. two to five. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how different they look. It could have been so, a white balance thing. It's nothing you can't fix in post. No, for sure. absolutely not. But it does, I mean, it doesn't look necessarily bad. No. It just looks different. Very different, and uh, there's just a lot of blue in the shadows. Actually, mm -hmm. is more what I'm noticing. So, yeah, don't know what's going on there with Canon. Okay, this is the same kind of shot, yeah, just more punched in for extra compression. Dude, um, that shot of her just that looks so cinematic, so beautiful. You know, the compression on the lens that you're using looks more pleasing than the previous shot, but absolutely. Um, I see nothing wrong with this image. Her skin tones are incredible. The green is nice and vivid and amazing. Yeah, it's weird because it looks super accurate yet looks super stylized yeah. at the same time, which mm -hmm. is really crazy. So this is going to, I'll just go ahead and skip into Canon, which is right here. Yeah, I mean the, again, you can totally color grade this and stuff, but what we're looking at here, the skin tones 
don't look as pleasing to me. They look they a little muddy. They don't. Yeah, they do Which look a little muddy. may or may not be, you know, the muddy look definitely comes from B&Ds, and that's why I'm always an advocate of straight and D for most cases. Sure, but I was using B&D on both. But you're using it on both, exactly. Yeah, so, so. that's kind of the, the crazy part here. Now, granted, these are different lenses. Mm -hmm. I'm using the 24-70 on the Canon and mm. I'm using the 18 to 55 on mm. the Fujifilm. Again, both are made by the same respective companies. I know it's not 100% yeah. fair, but it's still... Well, it is fair because you're showing kind of the best of that brand, right? Like... Well, I mean, maybe not the best, but just normal. Yeah, exactly. Very normal. You know, these are lenses that most people are going to have mm -hmm. in their kit with the respective camera. Yeah, and you can't put a Fuji lens on a Canon body. Yeah, so. it, it wouldn't be as fair. So this is another shot here. Again, extremely pleasing. It looks so good. I'm telling you, man, F-Log is so good. It looks so cinematic. It looks like a Aerie, like a, an Alexa or something. What's crazy is that we're also, it's uh, we're looking at a crop sensor versus full frame. Now, mm -hmm. granted, it is cropping because I was yeah. shooting 4K. You're doing 4K. But it's still a full frame camera mm -hmm. so it's the, interesting how that is looking part of the color that we might be seeing too is the fact that we are doing 10 bit on the fuji versus 8 bit that is true so yeah you're getting more of a like the roll off on the highlights here the skin tones just have millions of more color information that's the difference between 8 bit and 10 bit it's literally like millions more color exactly. so that's fujifilm this is now canon Ugh. that looks really bad that does not look bad madison if you're watching this i'm not saying that to you I'm no saying no it absolutely the not the um, color does not look good the color does not look good at all it looks too green okay, it's, it's super shaky because i'm just holding the camera um i'm looking at the highlights again it does look very similar to the fuji i might be able to say that the fuji and the canon have a similar dynamic range but yeah. the overwhelming response that I'm getting from almost every single Fuji shot is, dang, that looks good. I think that, it, cause like if I pause it here, it's not that it doesn't look, like it, it doesn't look as good as the Fuji, but it's like, this would totally be an acceptable Absolutely. image. I it's would just, pull some of the orange out maybe. Yeah, but. like grade it, but it's like, well, just the Fuji just looks better. Just straight out. Yeah, it just looked better. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see what else we got. I think more of the same kind of shot. Again, still it still looks really good. This is, I guess, objective, but I don't know. It's kind of factual. It does look better. And then same shot, Canon. Yeah, I think it's too yellow. You know, it is again, very you, yellow. Can, you can correct these things, but we're just looking straight out of here. And then this is a Fujifilm time lapse of the Huntington Pier. Mm hmm which a lot of dynamic range going on you got hi crazy highlights in yeah the i mean clouds like, and the water reflections you can see all these like oil rigs and the barges back here mm -hmm. everyone's swimming around it looks amazing it looks really good yeah yeah it looks really good so i'm gonna skip over to canon this looks super it looks really again. amateurish for some reason yeah um again i think it's the color but like the the shadows are way crunchier here. You, you might be losing some of that, um, the shadow detail yeah. on this shot. Maybe. Um, I think that, if anything, we might have learned that the LUTs that Canon provides is just not as good as the LUTs that mm -hmm. Fujifilm provides, uh, yeah. uh, um, supplies. Um, yeah. If anything, that might have been what we learned here, because that's, that's what I was using on these. Sure. So. Yeah, and a, a professional colorist could probably match these two images very well. Yeah, I mean, because at the end of the day, they're both log images. Exactly, but the 8-bit of the Canon is always going to fall apart faster than the 10-bit of the Fuji. Absolutely. Because we're dealing with... And again, there's of... something about it. It's almost like a... It's almost like a... Maybe a... I don't know, is it bluishness? But it's mm. it doesn't look wrong uh, that the... Um, like, yeah. right here, do you see what I'm saying here? Yeah, like... like it... It definitely has a look like there's a there is some sort of mojo going on with the Fuji film. Yeah, it just looks like a, a stock of film rather than a digital picture. Which of course is what Fuji film mm -hmm. advertises. It's mm -hmm. like their film simulations, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of it. I mean, it was just a quick little comparison between C log and F log, mm -hmm. and then of course using. Canon and Fujifilm's lot specifically. So, so. so, with that being said, Connor, yeah, I have a question. Okay, you bought the EOS R because you want a flip screen and autofocus for YouTube content. We're yes. shooting this video right now on the EOS R because we is. can see on the flip screen. Mm -hmm. But 
our test showed that we both liked the Fujifilm better. Absolutely. The X-T4 is coming with a flip screen. I know, yeah. I, what I, are you going to do? I think I'm going to sell my R. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to dump the R. I, you know, the question, I was going to sell both of them because I thought my Fuji X-T3 was going to become irrelevant mm -hmm. with the X-T4, but since they're kind of, I mean, the only thing that's going to change is like functionality of like the, so the articulating hardware. screen and uh, IBIS. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, the sensor should be the same. It's going to shoot similar to the same specs. So it's like, maybe I should keep my X-T3. Mm -hmm. Put on a gimbal and, and only sell my R. I know mm -hmm. I just got it too. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, a couple months ago. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I was going to sell both or maybe just the X-T3, but now I'm kind of like, maybe I should sell the R. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty interesting test. I mean, this just looks really good. I mean, and you have such a great range of color there. You got the pink in the back and then the, the green with the pop of sunlight and the mm -hmm. blue and Absolutely. skin tones. And, and even and some red on this flag over here. So this is here. a great test and the color is just so pleasing on that image. Yeah. So anyways, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think of the test. Did we do it wrong? Probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you guys thought of the color between the Fujifilm and the Canon. I was actually kind of surprised. I, yeah. you know, Canon's known for color. So this is really, Absolutely. really interesting. So yeah. thanks Dave for joining me. My, my honor. <laughs> it's uh, it's been too long. It's been too long. This is fun. Absolutely. We kind of, a blast. we collabbed. We just hung out all day, yeah. had some great food, had a good time. It was great. Yeah. So anyways, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for hanging. Thanks for hanging. <laughs>